Hi guys. Today I want to talk about the modulators in MIDI Guitar 3. What are modulators and how do we use them? In MIDI Guitar 3 a modulator is something that changes or modifies a particular parameter. It could be something within an instrument, it could be the dynamics part of an instrument, or it could be a parameter state like on or off. So to start with something easy you can use the square envelope to control say a paddle or an instrument or even a chains on and off state or you can use a sign to give it this undulating character controlling say a filter in the synth if you want to. But you can also do more advanced stuff like perhaps replacing the use of a breath controller with any of the MIDI Guitar 3 envelopes. You can also connect any of these modulators to sliders and buttons within uh, MIDI Guitar 3 itself. So, first of all, where do you find the modulators? Choose from any of the available slots in any of the chains and you have the modulators here and also in the MIDI machines here. Going forward, I'm going to talk about our modulators here as envelope modulators or envelopes, plain and simple. And these envelopes have handles, which are places where we can connect other modulators to, say a breath controller, an expression panel, or another envelope to modulate the first envelope that in turn modulates some parameter in the some instrument or in MIDI Guitar 3. This will all be clear as day as we go along and I'll make some examples and you'll see how this works. But it could be important to know that there are at least three different kinds of envelopes at play here. Tracker generated envelopes and those are strike, pressure and brightness. Secondly we have the oscillator envelopes, the sine, saw, square and also wobble. It's a combination, I think, of two or more signs. And lastly, we have this tool category where we have the traditional ADSR, we have a MUX, which is a mix of any two inputs, and we also have invert, which gives you the opposite envelope of what you're putting into it, out of it. So as opposed to the oscillators envelopes, these two last ones are dependent on secondary input to be anything at all. I'll go over these in some future examples and you'll see them in work later on. A first look at the 10 envelopes that we have in the modulators module here in MIDI Guitar 3. We have strike, pressure, brightness and those are the envelopes generated from the MIDI Guitar 3 tracker to go together with their respective counterparts in the instrument. So the strike is supposed to go to the strike, the brightness and the pressure is of course meant to connect to those respective counterparts in their instrument as well. The reason for having this wiring procedure is it's not always you need to actually modulate something in between the tracker and the instrument. And if you don't, there's no need to do anything and that connection is already done. But if you are interested in changing any of the strike, pressure and brightness, open the modulators, change any of the handles manually or connect some sort of controller for a real-time control over some parameters. Let's start with the tracker envelopes. So strike, for instance, it's just the transient momentary velocity value, but in a polyphonic setting, of course, since we're talking MP. From just having opened these drums, let's listen to how sensitive I can get with playing, say, something like a ride here. So drums have this character that they really change color as we strike them a bit harder and 
So it's really important that we get this kind of dynamics down to a T. The guitar isn't the best instrument in the world because when we hit hard, it really becomes difficult to be precise. So therefore, you might want to do something like this. Connect strike to strike for any drums and perhaps connect something like an expression pedal. And instead of using your actual pick to pick so much harder, use your pedal instead. And you can get all these nuances in dynamics, even for the higher velocities, not having to fight your instruments to pass this over to the virtual instrument side. The obvious reason for doing this, rather than connecting your pedal to the output volume of that instrument, is you keep the dynamic integrity of whatever's programmed into this instrument. There's a lot of work put into the differences between the soft dynamics and the hard dynamics. You also get the benefits of using that. So let's get after one of those most sought after effects or functions in uh, MIDI Guitar 3, namely using the modulators as expression input instead of say a breath controller, perhaps together with an expression pedal. You'll see if you want to use that later. This is what it sounds like having done nothing else. So we have something like a pressure part, but you can hear still this dynamic profile from the strings. As it stops vibrating, it's getting a bit lower in intensity. And perhaps you want to control that in a way. So now I'm going to connect pressure because it's the part after I've struck the note and until it sort of dies. That's the part we're looking to control. Connecting the pressure to pressure here, doing nothing else, it will sound exactly the same. If I just change any of the handles here to begin with, you're gonna immediately realize that there's a difference. Now you heard that the pressure goes up instead and it keeps up. It's not longer following this dying out character. If this was the only thing you wanted, for a steady note to have the same pressure, you're done. But if you want something like a slight variation to this perhaps, use something like the wobble to connect to. I connect this to the max part right now, so I'll get a slight dynamic variation. If I, on the other hand, want some real-time control over this, if, if I want to have the same control that I have with the breath controller, but I want to use, say, my expression pedal instead, I can connect my expression pedal to one of these as well. There are really a thousand ways to interact with this pressure envelope that in turn goes to the instrument before it does that. And you have a thousand ways to change how this particular envelope looks. It's not just playing a note and having to live with the dynamic profile that comes from the MIDI Guitar 3 first interpretation of what that note sounds like. Those days are gone. Now it's up to you to actually change the dynamic profile to your liking with stuff like the modulators on the way. Talking about the brightness envelope now. The first thing I need you to know about the brightness envelope is that it's meant to connect to CC74 if you want to do this by the book. But for any instrument that you open in MIDI Guitar 3, CC74 is turned off by default. If you are going to use brightness together with some instrument, you just either move the knob or you connect the brightness envelope directly to CC74 in that instrument. And after that, you can start using whatever is assigned to the slide dimension in 
any MPE instrument. It's very much up to the instrument developers to assign something interesting to the brightness or to the slide dimension if they want that. I have Rolly's equator here and on the one hand it is a string sound and on the other hand in the other end of the spectrum it is a horn sound. I'll just connect my expression paddle here and I'll play a chord. It's quite easy for me to go between these two different sounds represented on each part of this brightness spectrum if I want to and I have this nice blend in between so this is a really nice use of brightness for me. Whereas brightness is a concept that we extract from our incoming guitar audio and pass along to the CC74 of these modern MP synths. Slide is really the name of the gesture for inputting anything on CC74 for other MIDI controllers. So in that sense, brightness and slide are the same thing. But there's vast differences, of course, in the way that they are affecting whatever we are putting into CC74. With that said, let's go over to the oscillator envelopes and see how they can control stuff even without any sort of guitar input. So if I want a mix between two channels, in MIDI Guitar 3 and I'm just going to use our own mixer, I'm not going into the instruments themselves. I can connect two of the sliders in the mixer here like this and going between these. I could also of course use a modulator for this. Let's go for the sign and I'll pull down on the amplitude frequency like this. Let's hear what it sounds like. <laughs> I want these changes to be less obvious and I want the, both of the instruments to sound at all times. So I'm going to raise the minimum level for this amplitude and decrease the maximum as well. So I'm closing in on a movement for the sliders where they're just moving but not as much. There's no moving all the way out to the extremes. And you hear that the instruments are sort of blending into each other instead. But I'm still getting some sort of movement. This is a really easy way to start working with something like a sine wave envelope as a modulator in the MIDI Guitar 3. example I'm using two sustainer pedals, two pianos on different channels and the way I'm separating these are with the help of two different envelopes. So one I'm using a square envelope to turn on and off one of the sustainer pedals. I'm also sending a signal to the handle of the invert envelope. So connecting the output from the invert envelope to the other sustainer pedal results in me having two sustainer pedals with totally opposite information on when to be pressed. And as I'm using the freeze function here for both pedals, I can time my playing so that I can always have another note beneath whatever I'm playing at all times. This is a really interesting way to work with two pianos separating them with the help of sustainer pedals and two envelopes in this case. This is a special case where I'm going to use the envelopes to connect to whatever CCs are assigned to an XY grid in a contact instrument. This is what it looks like to begin with. There are a few of these contact instruments that have this mixes of two instruments perhaps. This is what it sounds like. And now I'm using the sustainer paddle here so I don't have to hold on to this. Perhaps you want to automate this. You want some sort of movement between these two sound sources and you want a pretty specific one. What I would do here is to first look at what are they using for the X or 
y-axis. So it's CC2 here in this case for the x-axis and it's CC3 for the y-axis. I'm creating two different sine waves here. And I'll change the frequency on one of them so you can tell them apart. And as I know we're going to use CC2 and CC3, I'll just connect those two on the contact instrument interface here on the module. And I'll just connect them like this to the respective inputs. And you'll see this move per my wishes. If I'm changing the looks of any of these envelopes, I'm also changing the way this is going to behave. Now, this could be too fast. Then you have to change the amplitude frequency here and you'll get a smoother movement between these. Since we have this tempo sync option up here, I can regulate the relative speed with which this is moving just by changing also the tempo, overall tempo, because it's going to affect how these are going to act. So double that tempo, it's going to move faster again. If I connect my expression pedal here to the tempo sync function in MIDI Guitar 3, as I'm moving my expression pedal down here, it starts to move and I can determine the speed by how much I'm pressing on the expression pedal for this. And I can vary this throughout if I want to as an effect. So this is a really effective way of getting to grips with something like an XY pad in any of the instruments. And you also have some real-time control over tempo via the time sync function if you want that. So I'll let you experiment for yourselves with stuff like the ADSR. It's just a shaper tool, so pull on all the handles and see what you get out of it. And the MUX use a saw wave and a square together and put the output to any filter cutoff in a synth and control that with a pedal and you'll get this really wild dubstep ramp ups if you want that kind of stuff. I'll let you experience and experiment with this for now. So till next time, see you and bye.